There are quite literally dozens and dozens of good habits, likely consisting of hundreds of good micro habits, all of which can be necessary for long-term success. The fact of the matter is that if you Google habits of successful people or anything even remotely close to that, you'll find thousands upon thousands of web pages, all of which are offering blog posts and articles and infographics and ebooks and podcasts and videos, and the list goes on and on. And they're all designed to teach you and to coach you on what it takes to become successful and then therefore the necessary habits to shape your life and make it what you want it to become in order that you might accomplish what you dream to accomplish or make it a reality for your life. The truth is, is that habits, these thousands of web pages, that they're not wrong, right? They're really good information. But here's the deal. So much of what it takes to be successful, I believe, is directly correlated to three seldom discussed and often neglected outside influences of healthy habit formation. In my opinion, it doesn't make much sense to discuss necessary habits for success until you discover and understand these three correlated outside influences of number one, who you are, meaning how you're wired, the uniquenesses that make you different than anyone else on the planet. Number two, who you hope to be, meaning your imagination of who you want to become, like your end game. What is your end game? And number three, what your core beliefs are and how they may evolve over time. Let's spend just a few minutes talking about each of these three correlated influences of habit formation that lead to success. We'll do this before we dig into what I believe to be the essential categories of success, which by the way, I believe are infinitely more important than the habits than themselves. And I'll, I'll tell you what I mean here in, in just a little bit. But these three correlated influence of habit formation are, number one, who you are. What makes you, you? You're unique, your personal configuration of matters such as but not limited to your family background, your ethnicity, your talents, your skills, all of these make you who you are. For example, your introversion or your extroversion traits, your thinker first or feeler first traits, your planner or spontaneity traits, right? Your big picture view or the finer point of view that comes in details, or maybe you're risk adverse, right? So what makes you risk adverse and someone else not? What makes you exceptional? You're exceptional in the sense that there's no one on this planet just like you. And so discovering who you are determines the, the habits you need to employ to become successful. Maybe said differently that what one person need, needs may not be what another person needs. Some of your overarching config, uh, some of the our overarching categories of habits uh, are formulas that might work for your friends or your coworkers, but they might not work for you. That's the reality of it. Number two, who you hope to become? What are your dreams? When you look off into the distance and daydream a bit, whether it's ten days or ten years from now, who do you hope you'll be? Like, what excites you? What are you passionate about? What do you feel like you were created specifically to do? What do the people around you recognize about you that might determine where your life path is taking you? What are you good at? What piques your interest? What piques your curiosity? These are all important questions to reflect on and to help you discover what is inside you and, and ultimately what is driving you to be and to become. Of course, the work is never done. I'm still asking some of the, these important questions, you know, and these and other questions uh, like them will help you know what habits you need to develop and consistently practice in order to discover who you want to become and then become that person. Number three, what are your core beliefs? Well, simply said, core beliefs are deeply submerged principles and assumptions that are embedded within you. These are the things that guide your behavior and ultimately determine how you see the world around you, which in turn directs your life. These are called core beliefs because they are in fact the core of who you are. These core beliefs, sometimes called personal values, you might hear them said that way, they impact every aspect of your life, like your day-to-day -day feelings, how you see yourself, your relationships, and your actions towards others. Your personal perspective on important subjects like religion, ethics, philosophy, 
social justice, politics, the environment, and of course, the list goes on and on. So here's the point I'm making by outlining these three correlated aspects of habit formation. In the end, what habits you need to form to be successful probably aren't a cookie cutter or template of what another person needs to form and be successful. Some people have an overabundance of passion, right? While others need to form habits that lead them to become more passionate. Some need uh, to form a measure of calm, to remain composed in a sticky situation, while others are cool and collected all the time and their heartbeat rarely escalates. Still, others are egomaniacs, while others need to form habits to instill a believable esteem. You understand what I mean, right? I mean, we're all different, we all have different dreams, and we all have our own core beliefs. We cannot think of or speak intelligently, I believe, about habits until we've reflected on and maybe even wrestled with these three correlated outside influences of healthy habit formation. I'm a best-selling author, a pastor, a coach, an entrepreneur, I'm an investor, I'm an inventor, a mentor, and most importantly, I'm a husband, a father, a brother, and a friend. I've discovered who I am. I've discovered who I want to become. I know what my core beliefs are. My success, therefore, is explicitly connected to my ability to stay true to me, no one else. Now, pattering yourself after another can do more harm sometimes in the end, trying to be successful than it can be just being yourself. It's great to learn from mentors and other influences in your life. Of course it is. It can be a great help to you, you know, your success long-term to mimic the habits of other great leaders and people who've attained success. However, lasting, authentic success, in my opinion, can really only be found by staying true to who you are. Along the way, of course, of discovering these three correlated influence of success, I've discovered the five categories in which to place the formed and still forming habits that lead to success in my life. I've learned that I can keep track of categories, right, on one hand, and I've labeled them all with the first letter E so that I can remember them more easily. And this is what I was referring to earlier when I talked about the categories being more important than than the uh, habits themselves. Okay, but so for me to be successful in life, I must number one, employ personal care. You know, this is the bucket where I place such habits as getting good sleep, uh, healthy eating, exercise, hobbies, finding ways to laugh, routines that give me, uh, you know, opportunity to just be stress free and to be successful. This is about taking care of yourself. Number two, you got to eat relevant content daily. This is the bucket where I place habits such as learning, growing, listening, and reflecting. You have to devour books and ebooks and articles and websites and blog posts and interviews and TED Talks in whatever form they come to you. You got to be hungry to learn and never be satisfied with that craving to learn more. You've probably heard that leaders are readers. Well, in the same way, successful people are always learning and never wasting the experiences or ideas of others. To be successful then, you must eat relevant content daily. Gobble it up, right? Devour it in order to be successful. Number three is about what I call empty time. This isn't wasted time, as it may seem like at first, you know, like you're sitting on the couch or recliner just staring off into the distance into nowhere. Empty time is the time that is void of regular work and duties, but allows you to stay focused, thoughtful, creative, inventive. Some choose to meditate, empty their mind. I choose to meditate and fill my mind with fruitful thinking while I'm at rest. Empty time allows for, well, it allows for refueling, a repurposing, reimagining your life and the pursuit of success. To be successful, you must create and find productivity in what I call empty time. Number four, you have to exit negativity. Say a very quick goodbye to the whiners, complainers, the naysayers, and the gossipers in your life. These folks are wired, and, and you have to remember my point about how we're created to be who we are. These people are wired to find comfort in constant complaining and pessimism and, and what seems like an endless, endless mockery of others. Successful people develop habits to exit the negativity quickly. I'm not talking about here the constructive criticism or the truths that are hard to hear. 
What I'm talking about here are the people who bring you down and others down because they tend to see the world through cynicism, gloom, suspicion, or even hopelessness. Successful people navigate away from the negativity by creating habits such as choosing to spend time with positive people, avoiding eye contact when negativity arises, speaking up and speaking out and very simply just walking away. To be successful, you have to figure out how to get away from negativity. And number five, the endless pursuit of character development. There's a Greek word for character, and it means something akin to this engraved mark. Your character is your engraved mark. Your character is what defines you. Your character is the internal and external factors of your life that are based on your core beliefs and that shape who you are. Your character is how people will remember you the best. Will people remember you as honest, humble, brave, kind, sincere, generous? Or will people remember you as proud, dishonest, cowardly, mean, insincere, selfish? I mean, how do you wish to be remembered? How do you wish to leave a mark on this world? Your mark is how you will be immediately perceived and ultimately remembered. So what kind of mark do you wish to leave? Successful people know that to become successful and to remain successful, they must put themselves in situations or at least recognize the situations that others have put them in and build good character. Simple habits like saying thank you, asking for help, taking the advice of others seriously, you know, listening intently, speaking kindly or not speaking at all, right? And these are all good habits that play into developing good character. To be successful, you must pursue a life of good character. Okay, so in summary, the three correlated influences are who you are, who you hope to become, and lastly, number three, what your core beliefs are. It's important that you recognize these, right? And the five categories in which to practice healthy habits for success are number one, to employ personal care. Number two, eat relevant content daily. Gobble it up. Three, practice empty time. Four, exit negativity. And five, have an endless pursuit of character development. You know, I've heard it said that leaders are going to end up somewhere, but great leaders are gonna end up somewhere on purpose. And I want you to end up somewhere on purpose. And a final challenge for you would be this. Be purposeful in your habit formation. Be intentional. Be tenacious. Good luck to you as you remain true to who you are. Stay focused on what you want to become. Live out your core beliefs and develop the essential habits to be successful.